were in Rome. And the women, it was just kind of funny because they showed their love because they used to agree and they got their hair, hair styles. And then the kids had like, just like a plain chain with a belt. And, but when the boys were turned into men, they wore like white chains. <laughs> Hello, I'm Carmina, a random citizen of Rome, and I'm going to inform you about the togas, the palettes, and the males, and the clothes. The people liked to layer, so they would use, they would wear the toga on top of the, um, the simple tunic. It was allowed to be worn only by three Roman citizens, and it was improper for a Roman citizen to be seen without. It was, a, the toga was very cumbersome because it was about 18 feet long and about 11 feet wide. It, was, it got very hot and it was difficult to do anything while wearing it. It was basically a large blanket that was draped around the body and leaving the one free. Women, women wore togas first, but they soon abandoned this for pallets. Pallets, pallets were also used as blankets, bathrobes, carpets, and mostly, most commonly a shawl. It was made of linen, cotton, and silk. It was typically white, brown, or green. Richer women liked more color, so they would do like pink or green or something like that. It was wrapped around the body and it was worn over a tunic or a stolen. It was secured in place by a clasp or pins. It was, there was enough material on it so it could be veiled over the head. Veils were not meant to cover the face. They were used when it was rainy, windy, or cold. And it was a symbol of a woman's modesty and respect. In some customs of Rome, if a woman took off her veil in public, it was considered a, an insult to her husband or an affront to the Roman society. And the cloaks, they were like a manly palace, so they would fasten it with buckles instead of pins. And it was arranged, it was the style was arranged from hip length to, to um, knee length to ankle length. And there were many different names given to specific types. The soldiers were wealthy, the soldiers and the wealthy wore shapes of gray and purple, and the, and the poor people wore simpler colors. And the cloaks were worn, of course, over the armor of four soldiers. Okay, well, although clothes are obviously very important, um, the way that they, the way that the Romans would show their social standing was with hairstyles, jewelry, and makeup, as Elizabeth said. Um, this wasn't as common for the men. They usually wore their hair very short, um, just like this, and it's not easy to do many things with a haircut like that. <laughs> um, the guys also didn't wear makeup, just like today. Um, but the women, they had, depending on their age and whether or not they were married, they would have um, very, either very elaborate hairstyles. The more wealthy women would have a special servant to fix their hair. They'd also have a special servant to do their makeup. So it was obviously a very important part of their culture. A young woman who wasn't married would probably have a very simple bun, not much um, hair jewelry, as I've been calling it. A lot of um, stones and precious metals in the hair, just like Kiana's right here. Um, uh, unmarried, um, who's getting in the late teens, getting to be married in age, would have, uh, depending on the social standing, a lot of curl. 